This is Center of the Universe, a show for us rational thinkers who sit firmly in the middle of the political spectrum and never budge, regardless how the Overton window shifts. I'm Grogu Fleck. Let's... Why, why did they cut the song like that? Got the music guy over here edging me with the greatest animated series intro of all time. Holy fuck. I'm gonna be all aggro with this woke garbage man, bursting at the seams. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, okay. I'm realizing now that uh, he, he heard all that. Uh, oops. So uh, I'm here with one pillar of garbage who is apparently self-aware enough to know his worth and brand himself properly. Do you mind if I call you garbage? Yeah, 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 go for it. Cool. I suppose I should speak the language of your cult and ask, what are your preferred pronouns, garbage? Uh, yeah, well, uh, um, personally, I, I'm, I'm more Cyclops than I am Morph, so, you know, I'm just, I'm just he, him. <laughs> wow, he fell for it. You guys hear that? He fell. You actually told me your pronouns. See, this is what is wrong with the left. It's insane. I mean, like, those are my pronouns, too. But, um, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, it's good to have you on. Uh, you certainly make a habit of pissing off some good friends of mine. In fact, you really ruffled feathers with my homies in your recent X-Men 97 video, Woke X-Men and the Web of Grifter Media. Honestly, I'm surprised you even showed up here, after being exposed for misinformation. Oh yeah, mis misinformation, do, do tell. Lol. Did you just You say said the X-Men team first appearing in Giant Size X-Men number one was assembled by writer Chris Claremont. But Claremont didn't start writing the team until one issue later with X-Men number 94. Uh, Lynn Wine was the writer who brought together that classic lineup. You, you, did you say lol? Oh, wow. Okay, listen up, garbage man. No bad faith allowed here, okay, bucko? Mahler said your bad faith in hour five of his response to an eight-year-old who said that EFAP are butt suckers, but man, trying to distract from my point, trying to shame me uh, about a tangential thing so people think I'm some kind of fucking dipshit and dismiss everything else that I say, man. Like always, Mahler was right. Yeah, um... I what mean, do you say to the accusation that you're so fixated on your woke agenda that you couldn't even be bothered to check your facts? Sure, I, I mixed I mixed up my sources a little bit, but um, I added I added a correction to, to the pinned comment. Maybe, maybe it was a little bit of misinformation there, uh, but it, it isn't anymore. See, my buddy Eric July, he's a great example of a real comics guy who knows his shit. You could learn a thing or two. Legacy characters what is are a, a new, comic book tradition. What do you mean legacy character? What do you mean new legacy character? Are you, you talking about knockoff you... versions? Is that what you're referring to? Okay, so you understand what a legacy character is, right? Yes, I'm asking you for clarification. Can you answer what the question I just had? The legacy character is simply I'm a character. I'm saying, what do you mean by new legacy character? If they're a legacy character, they like, wouldn't be new. What? <laughs> well, I mean, ultimately, it doesn't really change much about my video, right? Like the point I was making is pretty much identical, whether I said he assembled the team or if he just, he developed it or whatever. Even if Len Wein and Dave Cockrum were the guys to, to jumpstart the, 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 the then canceled X-Men series, you know, Claremont was the guy who, who took these characters and, you know, pushed them, developed them, uh, Storm, Nightcrawler, Wolverine, they weren't his babies, I guess, but you know, he, he raised them. He's the, he's, he's the guy that stuck around. You tried to slip that past me just now, didn't you? <laughs> the X-Men had been canceled? <laughs> is this the wokeness or the Britishness that compels you to be so incorrect? See, this is why it's better here in the center. You see things just rationally. You're unbiased, objective. X-Men is one of the most celebrated and globally recognized properties from comic books, and they debuted during Stan Lee's 1960s run of instant hits like Spider-Man, Hulk, Fantastic Four, but it got canceled? Wow, man. Pillar of Garbage is right. Lol. Wow, that's the, that's the first time I've ever heard that one. But yeah, the, uh, the, it's fun uh, learning about the original run in the 60s, actually, because it was kicked off by, by Lee and Kirby. But, um, you know, it didn't stick around. Uh, it didn't sell super well. Um, and it, hey, you know, the team that didn't sell super well, the team that didn't make that mark, bunch of bunch of white people there. Yeah, nothing against white people. So you think all white people should be canceled? <laughs> I am one, uh, but 
isn't it worth thinking about that the team that actually put the mutants on the map had a you know German bloke, a little, little blue guy, an African woman, a Russian, an Irishman, a Japanese man, and a, a Native American? You know, hey, isn't that isn't that a little bit woke? But what is this tactic you're trying right now? Um, what is that tactic? Um, I mean, if stating facts is a tactic, then I'm, I am I am I am trying that tactic. But yeah, this was the team that actually cemented the X-Men. It's, it's the team that Claremont took and used to, to bring this brand to, to become Marvel's best selling by, you know, a mile. Just look at, you know, stories that are now classic like uh, Days of Future Past or Dark Phoenix, God Loves, Man Kills. These are stories that tell progressive tales with, you know, a diverse cast. And hey, you know, if, if state in facts is a tactic, you know, sure. But I, I think I'm just in facts. And hey, by the way, even as far back as the 1980s, the X-Men were the targets of conservative outrage. Is that right? Can you prove that? See, these Wokies can never back up their bullshit. It's all feelings and virtue signals. The most popular comic book series right now is the X-Men. It's published by Marvel Comics, located in the building behind me here in downtown Manhattan. The X-Men are subhuman beings with supernatural powers bent on destroying evil. In this particular issue, God Love, Man Kills, the X-Men, of course, are the heroes, the villain, a Christian evangelist. An evangelist felt he was called by God to destroy mutants like the X-Men, including the leader of the superheroes, whom he crucified, while quoting scripture, of course. In the end, the evangelist was shot, and the X-Men and their leader lived through the ordeal. Marvel Comics, which wouldn't grant CBN News an on-camera interview, called comics and important print media kids are very receptive to. However, they said when it comes to religion, they consider themselves neutral. In this point, and uh, if he looks up, he is not this evil incarnate, and then he says, in awe and wonder, he looks up to behold a man. Now, you recall the statement in the gospel, echo homo, behold a man, which had to do with Jesus. And here, there's a shaft of light, and he looks up to behold behold a man. They've taken scripture and twisted it totally with a crucifixion image and so forth. And here is the crucifixion going on of one of these subhumans. And out of this guy's chest is coming another person who we're not quite sure is. He's hanging on a cross and here he is bathed in light. You tell me that's not blasphemous. And not only, but this is being sold to your children. Or hey, more recently, think about when North Star was married to his longtime boyfriend Kyle in 2012. You know, the word woke hadn't been weaponized yet, or the whole last five years with the Krakoan era saw an incredible amount of, you know, representation on the page and in the, in the creator lineup. And there are entire channels who spent that whole period of time whining about how many queer characters and creators were involved. Like that era's X Factor team was composed almost entirely of LGBTQ plus mutants. So yeah, when the X-Men 97 trailer pops up and these guys clutch their pearls, a, a non-binary shapeshifter, up, act offended that Rogue's caboose has been shrunk based on one solitary still frame from the old show, it just, you know, it shines a spotlight on how disingenuous it all is. Because like clockwork, the outrage merchants of any given era have just reliably attempted to use X-Men as a tool for their agendas. There's not an argument to be made here. The X-Men have always represented the challenges of socially disadvantaged people since their inception. It's their defining element to anyone who's not conned or trying to con. Because with such a popular cultural force as mutants have proven to be, any political ideology or project bent on devaluing those disadvantaged people has to reckon with the X-Men. They must attempt to rewrite that narrative. But, you know, to most people whose brains aren't soup, all this does is further underscore the need for that mutant metaphor that's found in the X-Men. Okay, garbage. Get the fuck out of here. You're just spreading your woke mind virus, all right? We won't have it here. I can't wait until my favorite apolitical, centrist, objective film reviewers EFAP his radical woke propaganda video. You know what else? Uh, fuck that guy, okay? I'm putting in a word with uh, Sitch and Adam friended. See, they'll have him on their show for one of their famous good faith discussions. In the meantime, Mr. Garbage, I'd suggest you learn to discuss media without injecting your politics into it. Everybody hates that. Nobody likes it, okay? Like how Critical Drinker does it. He's the author of books, right? So like he knows what he's talking about when it comes to movies, okay? Oh yeah, hey, Rags from EFAB left a message for you. I don't, I don't know, kill yourself.
Oh, I no. guess. <laughs> that guy's hilarious. He is so cool. Pillar of garbage can just get fucked, all right? You know, I don't encourage my audience to go and harass him or anything like that. Okay, you guys don't do that. We don't like when you do that around here. <laughs> we don't. We don't encourage it, okay? So don't do that. Audience, do not harass Pillar of Garbage, all right? <laughs> all right, back to this other fucking show. Hello and welcome to Actual Fandom. My name is Dane. This video is, uh, it was originally intended to be uh, a part of the larger project that I've been working on for a while called The Other Comics Con. However, that video being a very new format, um, not just to me on the channel, but like kind of a format I've never really seen before, I'm still trying to kind of work out the, the kinks on that and uh, make sure that it, it flows well, it's entertaining, everything. Um, however, progress is being made. Nonetheless, this was supposed to be um, a satirical bit of, um, you know, uh, kind of an aside that would be dispersed throughout the video, and, and it still will be. This is just the, the full interview, quote unquote interview, between Grogu Fleck and their real life person, uh, Pillar of Garbage, represented here by his logo with uh, an animated mouth. Uh, if you are someone from Pillar of Garbage's uh, community, his audience, who is, is new to my channel, I welcome you. And, um, you know, I think you'll probably find, you know, more or less that, that um, this is the kind of content you're looking for. If you're a fan of his, um, maybe not quite so classy. I think Pillar has a, a bit more tact than I do, um, but I am, have learned to embrace that about myself. Grogu Fleck is a character that I kind of dusted off, kicked off the cobwebs. Uh, he, he hadn't had him out since, I think, Halloween of... I think uh, 2022 and back then he was just kind of like a little you know weird little voiced guy but for this uh, I decided to kind of uh, revamp what Grogu Fleck is about um, he is now a centrist Pillar was willing to do this little bit that I kind of wrote on the fly from the fictional show Center of the Universe with Grogu Fleck which is a show inside of my show the other comics con it doesn't have to make sense you know it still makes more sense than half the shit that's on YouTube right okay so hopefully you'll enjoy this. If you do, I really hope that you'll stick around. You'll you'll be subscribed. You'll hit the like button. You know, comment. Let me know what you think. Um, open to feedback. Open to criticism. And if you'd like to, uh, you know, learn some of the behind the scenes stuff about um, this this video as well as pretty much any video that I'm going to do, um, you know, I'll have more personal anecdotes uh, that are be uploaded over on Patreon, where you can follow me for free. By the way, um, you know, I post about my creative process pretty regularly. I ask questions of, of you guys, like you know. What, what do you think of this versus this so on and so forth um and then yeah if you wanted if you're able to if it's possible at all and you can support a content creator i definitely will not turn you away uh from that but even just following me for free and giving feedback and just you know saying hi now and then uh you know that that does a lot for for me anyway yeah like i said if you're new here welcome if you're not i'm glad that i haven't run you off yet look for episode one of the other comics con uh, very soon um and then in the meantime take care of yourselves and one another